the gentleman who I'm going to invite to speak in a moment yeah. is part of our journey of rediscovery. Today has been all about reconnecting and taking a journey back into our roots and then bringing the lessons and teachings of those roots here into the, uh, the modern world and learning how to apply them. The Jewish people, the people of Israel, we have a history, we have a relationship and we too are on a journey of rediscovering that. We're very, very fortunate to have Mark G with us today and so I'd like you all to welcome him to the podium and um, Mark, please, the floor is yours. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Thank you for those very, very kind words, words of welcome. It is much appreciated and you spoke about a special bond between the people of Israel and the people of India. And there is such a bond. And before coming here today, I checked my history. And in the Hebrew Bible, uh, specifically in the Book of Kings, Kings 1, chapter 10, verse 22, at the time of King Solomon, who is one of the ancient kings of Israel in antiquity, in biblical times, there is already a reference to the relationship between the people of Israel and the peoples of India, and the cultural relationship, the economic relationship, the trade. So the friendship and the cooperation between our two countries is not something new, it's something that dates back more than centuries, more than a millennia. It's important to know. Uh, uh, I also want to uh, uh, say something that needs to be said. The Jewish people, when we lost our independence in our homeland, we were scattered across the planet. Jews lived in Poland and in Holland and in Iraq and in Morocco and across the planet. In many places, Jewish people suffered. In many places, Jews faced discrimination. In many faces, places, Jewish people faced institutionalized discrimination. You've all heard the uh, stories of the pogroms and uh, the Nazi Holocaust and so forth. As far as I know, as far as I know, and I've studied this, in India, the Jewish community was never persecuted. That Indian civilization, unlike others, unlike Christian civilization in Europe, unlike some of the peoples in the Middle East, in India, there was never a phenomena known as anti-Semitism. <laughs> there is something about India which is special. Jews lived in India as a small minority for centuries, never persecuted, never persecuted. This is something you can be proud of. This is something that I am thankful for. I hope also that the Jewish people returned some of this uh, 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 friendship in our contribution to India um, I was checking today, I saw there was a cultural contribution, I saw a few of the Bollywood actors and actresses were of Jewish descent. If I say their names, I don't know if you will know these people. I might mispronounce them, I apologize. But apparently Ranjit Chowdhury was of Jewish heritage, David Abraham Chalukar, and someone called Nadira. Yes, they were all Indian Jews. And of course, from culture to defense, I was speaking to my host as I walked in, of course, Lieutenant General J.F.R. Jacob, who was Chief of Staff of the Eastern Command, and I believe later on went on to command the Eastern Command, was a proud Indian Jew. But our countries have more things in common. We were both under British There's colonial authority, for three minutes. both our countries. And we had to, okay. both our countries had to struggle for our independence. 
And in both our countries, if we are frank, we received some good things from the British too.、Uh, and both of our countries went through difficult processes of partition. And so, in a modern 20th century period, we see that India and Israel share a commonality. We also, and I say this to all the women here today, Israel and India had female leaders before any other countries. Correct? You in India had Indira Gandhi. We in Israel had Golda Meir. Ten, fifteen years before the British elected Margaret Thatcher. People forget this, but it's true, and it shows the values that we share. With your permission, I'll also share two important dates. In 2017, Prime Minister Modi became the first Indian Prime Minister to visit India. To visit Israel, sorry, the first Indian Prime Minister to visit Israel. A landmark visit, which we all remember in Israel. A, a revolution in the relationship in a positive way, and of course, the following year, Prime Minister Netanyahu made his. Official visit to India, which was also we saw how warmly he was uh, uh, received, and we see today the bilateral relationship going from strength to strength. And with your permission, I want to allude very briefly to some of the areas that show how closely India and Israel are working today as close partners in defence. We have a strong, strong defence relationship. We have a growing trade relationship. Our economic relationship every year is getting stronger, especially in areas of technology and uh, uh, communication. Everything to do with high tech. We are working together. We are partners. Tourism. Every year, literally, thousands, tens of thousands of Israelis are visiting India. They love your country. Agriculture. Israel is a small country. We are only nine million people, but in high-tech agriculture, we have some areas where we are pretty good, and we are sharing that experience with India. And we're hoping India,、uh, through our cooperation, to move forward. And I think this is an area where we will continue to grow. Even in space, we are working together. In many ways, Israel and India are natural partners. Natural partners, and I think there's something that we share: the Indians and the Israelis. We are both, as people, very conscious of our heritage, very conscious of our contribution to human civilization. About the Indian contribution to world civilization, you can all be very, very proud. I am proud of the Jewish contribution to world civilization. After all, Judaism, in many ways,、uh, uh, the Jewish people brought to the planet things that were picked up by others. But the Jews also had an important contribution to human civilization. So, as peoples, we are proud of our past. We are proud of our heritage. We are proud of the civilizations that we represent. But we don't close the doors. While we are proud of our past and proud of our civilization, we embrace the modern world. We embrace the modern economy. We don't build walls. We we hug. We embrace the opportunities of the modern world. We embrace the future. We have our feet standing in our roots, which are our civilization and where we come from, and we are aspiring at the same time to the future. And I believe that combination. Will ensure the success of both India and Israel in the 21st century and in the years after that. I thank you all very much. I'm happy to answer questions on any subject. Please don't don't be please sir. Your Excellency, thank you for a, a very passionate.、Uh, Talk.、Uh, a question, with your permission, if I may. Do you think there are any similarities between、uh, Hinduism and Judaism 
in terms of how they interact with other civilizations? Uh, I'm talking principally about conversions, perhaps? There is definitely a similarity on this issue. Uh, the Jewish religion, I believe, like Hinduism, but I don't claim to be an expert, and please correct me if you think I say something that is not correct, but we have never been a proselytizing religion. We've never gone out there and, and captured a territory and say, all of you people must convert to Judaism. On the contrary, in our tradition, it is actually difficult to convert. If a non-Jewish person comes to a rabbi and says, I want to convert to Judaism, he, he won't say, great, he will ask, why? <laughs> yes, what is your reason? And in some streams of Judaism, they will place obstacles. They will want to know the convert is very sincere and there's no ulterior motive. And so this is something that we share because I understand uh, Hinduism has a similar philosophy. Um, but it's also one, I said before how Jewish people in India lived with tolerance without anti-Semitism, and I say it again, you can be proud of this. But is this not also because Hindu, you always had the belief of live and let live. And, and, and maybe in other countries where Jews were, where people wanted to convert Jews, to put pressure on Jews to convert, to, to discriminate against Jews and say, if you stop being Jewish and adopt our religion, we will accept you, you see? This we didn't have in India. Very important. Absolutely, thank you very much. And that describes uh, Hinduism exactly. And I think that's why I see a very strong civilization convergence. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Um, in your talk, you mentioned the experience of coming out of a colonial period. And sadly, it's shared by many, many nations who are now reconnecting, almost as though their civilization was put on pause or hold or broken for a while. There's a great healing going on. Now, in India, that recollection, that reconnection is a very organic, disorganized um, happening. In Israel, is there a... Uh, any thoughts going into how to reconnect post-colonially um, with the past prior to the intervention of the British? Or is it also organic? And if so, are there any areas in which there could be uh, work together to enable both nations to heal from the um, devastation that was caused by colonization? So our struggle against uh, the British, especially in the last few years, was difficult. When Israel became independent in 1948, the same period, of course, that India achieved its independence, yes. Um, the relations between the British and the uh, new Israeli state was not particularly good. That's the truth. Um, but our relationships today are more mature. We have a very good relationship today. Um, and we've evolved. Um, and there, if I'm frank, frank, thankful, I think we, uh, looking back, uh, there are probably many things we can be proud that we got from the British, yes? The independent judiciary, the uh, parliamentary democracy, something that both India and... This is something I think India and Israel can be very proud of, yes? Many countries achieved their independence uh, in the late 1940s, at the end of the Second World War, yes? But how many countries can say that from that period till today they have always been democracies, yes? Not many, and I think Israel and India are maybe the only two of the new countries, yes, in Asia, Africa, yes, who received their independence and were always democratic countries. And is this by accident, or is this something to do with our culture, our civilization, uh, 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 and so forth? I also think, to go back to the previous question, Jews and Hindus, we, we share things. I see it here when, when I see the Hindu community in, um, in Britain. Family is important, yes. Education is important. Uh, respect for elders. Uh, these things are, we share. Maybe not only us, but these are things that bring us together. We want to, as I said, we, we are proud of where we came from. But we are also very forward-looking. How do we embrace the modern world and succeed in the modern world? I'll give you an example. And I say about Israel. There was a time when I was growing up in the... I remember the, the 1970s, and there was a terrible war between Israel and the Arab states in 1973. And the Arab world used the oil embargo to put pressure on countries to support their position and not to support Israel. 
And I remember as a young man thinking, this is, uh, gives the uh, Arab states who are at war with Israel such a huge advantage because they can galvanize international support because they have this product that the whole world needs. So I'm pleased to tell you that today, with countries that we fought a war with back then in the 70s, today we're at peace with. Yes? We have peace with Egypt, we have peace with Jordan. This is good. It's better to live in peace with your neighbors, correct? But also in the 21st century, Israel has become a hub of innovation and technological development. And in the 21st century, maybe this is the oil, uh, metaphorically speaking. In the 21st century, maybe Israel is producing the products, the science, the technology, the innovation that is making Israel uh, increasingly an important player on the international stage. Uh, the Indian-Israel relationship is, of course, based on common values. We're both democracies and we have so much in common, and I've spoken about that. But it's also based on joint interests, correct? And that combination of joint interests together with, with shared values, that is, I believe, a winning combination. Your Excellency, a couple of questions with reference to a couple of myths about Medinat Israel. The first one is about the formation. And there's so much we can talk about, but if you can give us a big picture, myth-busting summary of the creation of Medinat Israel and what happened before then, and also maybe allude to the words Philistine and how that became Palestine. And the second thing is your security considerations, which no one seems to understand from the time it takes to lob a rocket into your country to the amount of air defense that you need to put into various territories. So these two myths, if you can help us understand. But if, only if you help me with my answer, because I know Israel is a small country. I said before, we're only 9 million people. And geographically, we're the size of Wales. So in India, what is the Indian equivalent of Wales? It's small, right? We are small geographically. If you get in your car in Tel Aviv, which is on the, on, the, on the coast, yes, and you drive east to the eastern border, you can do it in an hour and a half, yes? It's a small country. Small demographically and small, uh, small uh, uh, geographically, yes? And for years, we were at war with our neighbors uh, our first Prime Minister, Ben Gurion, declares independence the day the British leave in May 1948. And that night, uh, Tel Aviv is already bombed by the air forces of our neighboring countries, and the, they invade the very next day. And Israel had to fight for our independence, we had to fight for our survival. Um, uh, but as I say today, um, we have succeeded. We have succeeded in building a modern technological society. We've increasingly prosperous country. We are a strong democracy. We've forged peaceful relations with our neighbors, people we used to fight with. We see that actually increasing. We see new relations with different Arab countries, which is very, very, uh, 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 very encouraging. The Jewish connection to the land of Israel goes back years. For the Jewish people, the land of Israel was always, always our homeland. And uh, in our tradition, we were forcibly exiled from our homeland. And finally, yes, in the modern period, we were able to return and reestablish our sovereignty. In our thinking, we are the indigenous people of the land. Yes? We are willing for compromises for peace. We know that peace will demand compromises. But we can't compromise on our fundamental right to national self-determination in our homeland. And this is something that's very important. I think, I think countries that have had to, to struggle for their freedom and independence know to value freedom and independence. I'll give you an example. My father, my late father, he passed away three, four years ago. He was born in a town in Germany called Magdeburg in 1931. He used to say it was the wrong year and the wrong place for a Jewish person to be born, because his generation went through 
the terrible years of the Nazi Holocaust. And I asked the following question. Israel was established in 1948. Had we been able to establish our independence just 10 years earlier, what is 10 years in history? 10 years is nothing in history, yes? If we would be able to establish our independence not in 1948 but in 1938, just 10 years, how many people could we have saved by opening the doors and allowing our people fleeing persecution to come home? So this is part of the modern experience as Jewish people. And that's why it's so important from our perspective that Israel is today independent and sovereign and strong. Uh, if I can be optimistic, the new relations we have with more and more of our neighbors is a sign that we are going in the right direction. And of great encouragement is our relations with India, which, as you know, in the past were not necessarily good the whole time, but in the last few years we have gone from strength to strength. And I know I speak for many Israelis when we say we want to build an even closer partnership with India. And we see on the Indian side an eagerness also to move ahead. We have so, I mean, you're much bigger than us, yes? But together we can achieve so much together, and we know that. A relationship based on mutual respect, on, as I said before, values, and on very strong common interests. Please. Thank you. Um, welcome, Ambassador. The question I want to ask is um, on the emotional side. Um, when we had the Mumbai bombing, the, we all were in tears, we all were outraged, and that was a synagogue as well that was bombed. How did, because we never, in this country, we never saw those news, how, how did the Jews felt about it? And I want to know, please, if you can, what was the emotion at that time? Uh, how did they take it that here you are, some thousands of miles from Israel, and someone manages to do that. And it was not as if it was done by accident, because one of the bombs that went off, it, it was by design. So how did people of Israel felt about it at that time? So first of all, it was strange because we were not used to this sort of violence in India. I said before, India has no history of... But in many ways, it was imported from India. We know it wasn't, uh, yes? I'm, uh, I understand. Yeah, the Mumbai attack. I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But we also we saw amazing solidarity from the government and people of India, support. We saw it coming out very strongly. For us, it was a shock because people were killed. It was a terrible, terrible attack. And, okay, so we are shocked, and you are shocked. What is the most important thing? That we work together closely to prevent these things happening again. This is the most important thing. To be shocked and to be outraged, angry, that's fine, but then you have to work together to keep our people safer, to keep your people safer. And so I'm proud to tell you that today in security cooperation, in intelligence cooperation, in counterterrorism cooperation, India and Israel are working together very, very closely. The terrorists, the extremists who bombed in Mumbai, yes? They have international relationships, correct? We know that. We know that. Uh, we can only defeat them by having an international networks that will fight against them. And like-minded countries who are threatened by these terrorists, we have to work together, and if we work together, we will defeat them. And that's the bottom line. And so when these outrages happen, we have to be angry, Yes, and we have to show disgust, but we also have to be motivated to work even closer together to defeat these people. I believe that very strongly. Lisa. Sorry. Would it be possible to set up a common website connecting Israel and India so that if people want to find out more about Israel, they just go to that website. Likewise for, for example, I'm teaching on Saturdays Hinduism to some students. I'd like to introduce them to Judaism, and maybe we could introduce some kind of a general certificate of education, O-level, for Judaism and Hinduism. So first Thank of all, a good idea. 
I think our embassy in uh, uh, Delhi is already putting out all things on the web. I know that your embassy and uh, in Israel is very big to encourage people. People to people contact is very important. I'll tell you a story. A few years ago, I think we had Jewish New Year. Jewish New Year is according to the Hebrew calendar, so it's not exactly the same date in the English calendar, but it's in September usually. And a few years ago, we were very pleasantly surprised, pleasantly surprised, to see the Prime Minister of Israel of India, Mr. Modi, wishing the people of Israel a Happy New Year in Hebrew. <laughs> He's, he tweeted in Hebrew. I remember this was big news in Israel. And then when you had after that your next big Indian holiday, we had Mr. Netanyahu tweet back in, yes, not in English, not in Hebrew, but in, yes. And so this is, this is very important, that we speak to each other in our, in our language. There is ultimately, I believe very strongly, into the intercultural dialogue. It's crucial. It's crucial. Please. Your Excellency, you... I'm going to ask the difficult question. Please. That's always my job. Um, you alluded to relations between India and Israel not always being good. And I'm very aware that the forces that were fighting for independence um, actually allied themselves with fascism in Europe. The forces in India fighting for independence allied themselves with fascism in Europe, even while there were Indian soldiers fighting with the British in Europe. So, and I know from traveling to India that there are still those who um, seem to feel that the fascism of Europe had a point. And I wonder how in these growing relations, you can overcome that. So first of all, we have to be honest. I know that there were some people in India, I don't think they were anti-Semitic, but because the British were the colonial power and other people were fighting the British, they thought an affinity, yes, I think they were wrong because if the Japanese or the Germans would have taken over India, it would have been much, much worse, yes, I have no illusions but I understand the historical context. I'm not aware, if you look at European fascist movements, yes, so you see a very strong anti-Semitic uh, Jewish hatred, is, but I'm not sure that is the, the these people in India who, who I'm, I'm not sure that's there, but I'm willing, if you know something I don't know, I don't want to apologize if people did bad things, I don't know. But it's true, yes? And in the first years of the State of Israel's independence, there was a dichotomy because I believe, from what I've been told, that Israel was very popular with the Indian public, but the Indian government in those years was very standoffish towards Israel. I think I understand the political context uh, at the time, what India was trying to do in building relationships around the world, and maybe they thought being too close to Israel would prevent that from happening. So there was a, a period where we had a, a low-level relationship. Never hostility, I don't think but a low-level relationship. But we have seen that change in the last few years. So I say, of course, we should learn from lessons of the past, but we have to look forward. Yes. We can't change the past. We have to go forward. And that we are doing together very, very, very strongly. Please. Your Excellency, thank you. Um, so Hindus are facing a lot of systemic vilification in a fair amount of the media, particularly in the UK, um, nearly all the media it seems. Um, obviously, Jews, they also face challenges with regard to the media in many sections of the English media. So do you have any advice for how we can help to tackle against that? Because we always view Jews as having a stronger hand with the media than we do, and we're trying to draw inspiration. So I wish I had all the answers for you. I don't know all the answers. That's the truth. I don't know this. I, I believe we have to speak our truth. Yes, I think it's always better to engage and to explain if you can and to talk. Um, but also to, 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 what is the word? I believe in dialogue. I don't think there's a substitute for dialogue. Obviously, if there's someone who hates you, you're wasting your time, yes? But on, on the assumption that most people don't hate you and it's just a matter of they don't have the knowledge or they're not aware of, yes? Uh, so dialogue. That's, that's my advice. But I'm sure there are people in this room who possibly could answer that question better than I can. I don't know. I don't pretend to be an expert on how to, yes?
So if that's the last question, I'd like to thank you so much for having me. Uh, uh, it's been a pleasure to be here. Um, I hope that we will continue to see the Indian-Israel relationship to continue to grow from strength to strength. I think it's, a, as I said in my more formal remarks at the beginning, it's a relationship that is based in history, that goes back centuries, but it is also a relationship that is based on the realities of the 21st century. And I really sincerely believe that the partnership between Israel and India is a partnership that can be one of the, the central partnerships for my country, for your country, and uh, in many ways uh, for the world. Ultimately, don't forget, Israel is also on the continent of Asia. Yes, we're an Asian country. And you bring things to the table which are crucial. We bring things to the table which are important. And when we have that Israel-India connection, that combination, I sincerely believe, it's a winning combination that will help both our countries achieve greater prosperity, greater progress, and peace and security that we all seek. I thank you all very much. Namaste. We hope you enjoyed this Chitti Media content. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.